Hi, I'm Tara, and welcome to Let's Do Books. Today I'm joined by Kate Gavin, author of the YA romance Full of Promise, which is out everywhere from Bella Books. Welcome, Kate. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So you're here to talk about your journey with lesbian fiction. How did you yes. discover it? Where did it all begin? So I was a bit of a late bloomer. Always thought I was straight. And then probably in my mid-20s, I was realizing that I was definitely not. Um, so I think I started off by just reading um, actual true-to-life coming-out stories. Like I uh, read The Reappearing Act, I think it's called, by Kate Fagan. Um, she was a ba college basketball player, um, kind of uh, had Christian teammates and things like that. It was hard for her to come out. And then I discovered, hey, there's a whole world of fiction out there that deals with queer women. And so I first started off with, uh, I think my very first book was Waiting in the Wings by Melissa Braden. And um, I'm a big kind of like theater nerd sometimes. I love musicals, things like that. Wish I would have been a dancer, but I don't like being in front of people. So that never would have worked out for me. <laughs> so I just fell in love with that one. And then it led to, I think, like Faded Love by Radcliffe. And then um, another one of my first favorites was Silver Wings by H.P. Monroe, because uh, I'm also a big World War II history buff sometimes and it dealt with women uh pilots in world war ii so then from then on as i just kind of became obsessed realizing that there were stories about me kind of figuring out who i was you know realizing that i was bi and just kind of coming to terms with that and just using lesbic as a way to accept myself it was a uh, pretty great actually and I you know have been a reader ever since so and then eventually you know came out to my books and family and all that stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. that's amazing so. so you obviously started writing because you had your debut novel come out this year yes I did was it anything to do with like the re the books that you were reading that made you say, "Hey, I could do this"? Like, what did anybody inspire you, or did you just feel like it was it was time? Um, kind of a, a mixture, I guess. Um, so I never so what when I realized I was by you know a lot of the books don't always have out bisexual characters or in just in uh, media in general don't always have the best representation of bisexual characters. So I actually started writing because I was going back to school for a different degree. I was going back to school for computer science. I was getting kind of bored with the classes and um, saw that they had an intro to queer studies class. The very final project was to take some sort of um, aspect of the LGBTQ community um, and write about it or present about it in several different media platforms. Um, so, you know, you could have written a poem, made a website, things like that. So I asked the professor, I was like, hey, can I write a short story? And so I actually don't like, I never liked writing when I was younger um, because I try and write it like I talk in as few words as possible. And so I started writing it and realized, wow, I really like this. And I just wanted to tell more about the characters. So I wrote a short story, which it wasn't necessarily a short story because it was almost 30 to 40,000 words. So more of a novella. And then after the class was over, I was like, hey, maybe I could do this. And maybe I could uh, have this as a YA that other, you know, young teens and even adults um, would relate to and hopefully maybe help them on their own journey. Because I always said, if, if it just helps one person, that's, that's good enough for me. You know, everybody else could hate it, but if it just helps one person kind of accept themselves, that's all I want. So, yeah, I finished writing it. I actually used the short story, the novella, to come out to my a couple of my brothers. I just sent it to them without, like, any, <laughs> any background. I was like, hey, read this story. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then I just started writing, and it was... Uh, surreal kind of journey never thought it would happen never thought I would get published and uh, submitted it to Bella and they wanted it so um it was a great experience and yeah I uh still can't believe it I just when it came out I was, <laughs> I was like I didn't write a book and, like people would come talk to me or like at GCLS ask me for my autograph I was like uh really me <laughs> that's not that's <laughs> no you don't do you really want that <laughs> that's it you you're it. You're the thing. You're you right. are yeah. an author. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Do you have any other books you're working on right now? I do. I've started, sort of started. It's been a slow process of, you know, once edits were back for my first one and just kind of getting back into it. Yeah, my next book is tentatively tentatively titled Table for Two. 
Um, it's about two women. It's a very busy lunch rush, a downtown restaurant. No one, they can't find a table because there's a huge convention in town. Um, so they get to the rest of one restaurant at the same time. They ask for a table just for one. They only have one table left. And so they decide to share it and they actually hate each other. <laughs> one, <laughs> one is a bit of an ice queen. Um, the other one just is, you know, she knows like, I'll, I'll never see this person again. Um, but of course they wind up having to work together. Reagan is a co-owner of a restaurant group and uh, Jill is the ice queen more character. Um, and she needs someone to cater her father's stepfather's 70th birthday party and her mother hires their company. And so they have to work together and, uh, it doesn't always go as planned, but, um, you know, slow burn kind of thing. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Kind of like an in public variation on the oh no, there's only one bed, but there are two of us. <laughs> True. Yeah, my my fiance actually sent me like the CNN article like a couple weeks ago about like people were stranded at an airport and they had to like share share a hotel room, and I was like, oh, that's exactly. <laughs> I felt so bad for those people, especially when I read about like who they were, and I was like, oh, that's so awkward. But on the other hand, there was a tweet that went around about like congratulations to the <laughs> fanfic community. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so we'll see. I have to actually, you know, get my butt in the chair and mm -hmm. start writing. I just kind of started plotting and like things like that, character development that I want to do. So, very we'll cool. See. I'm looking forward to that a lot because that Thanks. premise just sounds so good. So, you alluded to the fact that there have been traditionally some challenges within our community with how bisexual women are portrayed and this is something that you know i've also mentioned in spots whether it's in book reviews or podcasts or whatever because also as a bisexual woman it's something that i'm looking out for where do we get that positive rep yeah. how do you feel like we're doing now compared to where we were say five or ten years ago um i think it's a little better i think there's always room for improvement you know we need to stop being looked at as like the greedy the greedy folks in the LGBTQ community and things like that, and that we're promiscuous or, you know, or that we need to pick a side or that we all, you know, uh, tend to wind up with men or things like that. And that other queer women shouldn't date us or that it's just always going to be a risk or something like that. So I think it's improving, you know, there are more bisexual characters on TV and things like that. And they actually sometimes will now use the word bisexual instead of just kind of alluding to the fact that, oh, yeah, they've dated both men and women before, you know, things like that. Um, but I definitely see a room for improvement. Um, there will always be room for improvement. You know, it, media in general is never going to be perfect in how they portray our community. But I think we're taking steps in the right direction. And hopefully I, I plan on having out and proud by characters in my in my future books um because i think it's important and um i just yeah i just uh want more positivity and mm -hmm. just for more acceptance for bi pan queer however people identify um i just want them to people to know that they are valid and you know that they should mm -hmm. accept themselves and hopefully other people will as well and just overall, now that you've kind of crossed from one side of the ecosystem that is the reader-writer community, although you are still a reader, mm -hmm. um, and now that you're on the other side, like, what do you think about where we're at as a genre right now? Is there anything that has you kind of encouraged or excited, or is there anything that you would want to kind of share about it? I just think that, uh, you know, with like GCLS and things like that, with, uh, I just think people are becoming more aware of our community and the genre in general, um, which I think is a great step. You know, Bella Books has like their Beacon Hill web series and things like that. And um, I think web series in general are also going to be a big, bigger thing. Um, you know, you had Carmilla and all that stuff. Um, it's easier to get into the hands of a younger audience, which I think will then broaden their horizons, especially if they're like, oh, I see this, but maybe they, you know, what, what, what about this kind of story in book form? You know, they'll go out and search for it. So I think we are taking steps like that in a, in the good direction. And I think that just people are becoming more accepting 
as a whole, as humanity, hopefully, um, that our stories will just become more well-known or just, oh, that character's bi or that character's gay. It's not a big deal anymore, you know? I, I mean, it'll take some time, but I think that's where we're headed. Thank you for being an awesome listener and supporting Tilt, the channel that brings you all the podcasts you want to hear. You're listening to Tilt. Find more podcasts on the lesbiantalkshow.com. So, is there anything that you've been reading recently that you just loved and think other people absolutely have to check out? Or are there any books coming soon that you cannot wait for? Oh, yeah. Um, I have, I haven't finished it yet, but I've been reading Burn It Down uh, by Kate, and, and then that's been great. And I've been really enjoying that one. Um, I've also been uh, just about to finish uh, Not the Marrying Kind by Jay, uh, which I loved Perfect Rhythm. Um, because then I loved that it uh, had an ace character. Um, so I was excited to see the sequel with uh, with Ashley. So those are my two that I'm currently reading and uh, it's just been trying to find time to finish with you know, you know work and real life kind of things. <laughs> writing books and all these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think those are my two uh, two ones right now that I've been really excited about. And are there any last words that you would want to share about your journey as a reader of queer ladies fiction? Just that I'm very excited that I found it. Um, it's been a great community. Uh, meeting people on Twitter, um, especially, has been wonderful. You get, you actually do get a really good sense of community. And I've met one of my closest friends now um, on Twitter. Um, but I think that. If, you know, you think that you have a story in your mind and you think that you can't write it, do it, try it, you know, short story, um, just little poems or whatever you want to do. If you think that you have a story that's worth telling, um, as a, you know, if you, you don't, don't just say that you're just a reader either. Uh, they are what, you know, give us the ability to write. We need someone to write for. So, um, I just think that if you are that kind of quiet, shy person like I am, go out on social media, go and find um, some folks that just start chatting about what you love and what you want to see in, uh, you know, future books or future web series, things like that. Um, it's just, it's been really helpful in helping me understand myself and accept myself. So where can people find you online if they want to connect with you? Best part is best places for Twitter, uh, Kate Gavin Books. Um, I'm on there uh, pretty often. Um, I also have a Facebook page just under Kate Gavin. Um, but yeah, you can reach out to me in both places. I will. I'm always happy to chat with uh, new readers or just just talking about either my books or um, any other uh, women loving women uh, fiction out there. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. All right. Thanks for having me. I had a great time. I'm Tara, and you've been listening to Let's Do Books. You can email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with your questions or comments. If you're an author who's interested in joining me on the show to talk about the lesfic you love or trends that have you interested, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this episode, please check out the show notes where you'll find a Patreon link for the Lesbian Talk Show or visit patreon.com slash the lesbian talk show. Patrons get exclusive content like bonus podcasts and author interviews that no one else gets access to. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or Spotify. 